travel along with us on an unforgettable three-day adventure through Morocco's Sahara Desert, where we tell you everything you need to know about choosing the right tour company. Together, we'll experience the breathtaking High Atlas Mountains, ancient Kasbahs, and the serene beauty of Dades Gorge. We travel to the mesmerizing sands of Morzuga, where we hop on camels and catch a breathtaking sunset. On day three, we explore everything on our way to Fez. We'll share valuable tips, insights, and everything we paid. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. Welcome back to Find Jeannie Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. We are here in the Merguza Desert and we're having an amazing time over the course of three days going from Marrakesh to Fez. We are going to give you everything you need to know about how to pick a great guide and have a once in a lifetime experience. You're not gonna wanna miss it. We got quotes from several tour companies that specialize in Sahara Desert tours, but it was hard to distinguish them. And even when I'd asked specifically how they each were different, I never got a truly satisfactory answer. It didn't help because I wasn't really sure how I wanted to customize the tour. We eventually chose Merzuga Tours. We spent time going back and forth with them on WhatsApp, so you'll want to have that installed. And we'll put a link in the description because there are a lot of tour companies with similar names and you want to make sure you book the right one. We should have spoken to them over a call though. Their English was good and we would have been able to ask better, more informative questions that way. So this is just incredible looking. Um, it's very humbling to see how other people live and uh, the Berber people are fascinating and we are really looking forward to meeting them. By using text, some nuances that they conveyed were lost in translation. I didn't fully understand what a four-day experience would be and I'm very disappointed we didn't book that over a three-day excursion. We'll talk about that more later. We weren't really interested in sandboarding or racing dune buggies, so we skipped an extra day in the desert. But had we known what to ask for, we could have arranged time either doing a cooking class with a Berber family, having dinner with one, meeting locals from the Kamlia village, and learning more about them. All of these would have been true bucket list experiences had we known what to ask for or hopped on a call first. So when I heard we were coming to this Kasba, I thought it was maybe just <laughs> very touristy and had a lot of hype around it because it was for movies. But the reality is it wasn't built for movies. It's natural. And movies just chose to be here because of how cool the scenery is. I think when that puts it in better perspective because really the, the buildings look like they're sand castles, you know, life-size sand castles, larger than life. Right. Well, and people used to live here and then they abandoned it and that's when the movies came in and started using it. Well, the water here is salt water, so yeah. it's not really a sustainable place because, you know, you really need water <laughs> to, to survive. So. Water in the desert, critical. <laughs> Our tour was from Marrakesh to Fez. There are some cool things to see and do en route to Fez, and that was a much better experience than backtracking. Plus, we think Fez is a fascinating city and think you should visit both it and Marrakesh. Our episode from Fez will be out next week, so we'd love it if you subscribed so you don't miss it. While you could choose a shorter one or two day tour that will take you to the Zagora Desert, the dunes aren't as impressive, and it's really more of a rocky desert than the golden sand you're probably expecting. If you're going to have a desert experience, we think you'll be disappointed by Zagora. We heard from a few people that you can get the best rates by waiting until you arrive in Morocco and then negotiating from the vendors in the souks. But we would caution against that unless you are on an extreme budget and saving money is your priority. Because their business isn't built on people reading reviews and choosing them that way, they aren't as incentivized to give you the best experience. Their clientele comes from people straight off the street, primarily looking for a good deal. You'll be more likely to be herded like cattle and have a very vanilla experience that's built by the driver versus the guests having the experience. We highly recommend that you choose a private tour. Sure, it will be a bit more expensive, but not overly so. And importantly, they'll be able to tailor the experience to you. We were able to avoid some of the most touristy stops to buy Berber carpets and Argon oil and other souvenir shops. Tour companies make these stops with larger groups because they get commissions from those places. Similarly for the food stops, when you book a private tour, you can opt to skip those options and be pickier about restaurants. One of the biggest perks of a private tour is that we could take a route through the mountains that wasn't accessible by a bus or a van. 
And because we had a thorough conversation with our tour guide about our interests, which included seeing everyday Berber life, he made stops where we could see women washing clothes and more Berber villages than you might see otherwise. Granted, the roads were a little more twisty turny and I felt a tiny bit carsick, but the sights and stops were well worth it for us. We also could move a bit faster because there was a lot less traffic on these roads. So our guide was talking about how 15 kilometers of palm trees were burned. And it turned out that there was some virus that the palm trees had anyway. So burning them actually killed the virus, which is a great thing. And the trees seem to recover from it. So you see a lot of palm trees here that are green, that have leaves, but the whole trunk is just blackened. The distance to get to the Murzuga Desert from Marrakesh is about 350 miles and nearly 300 miles from Fez. Starting from Marrakesh will get the longer portion out of the way sooner, but either way will be a significant amount of driving. It's a symbol of the Berber tribe. It is meaning freedom. So that one here is hand, that one here is the feet. And when it's one like that, it's for the woman, like a free woman or that one is a free man. Oh, interesting. Yes. So being able to have a say in the music you listen to, whether you have the windows open or the air conditioning on, and whether you get bathroom stops when you need them are all fairly critical points that make a private tour worthwhile. Some of the most spectacular scenery of our trip were the reddish-brown cliffs of Tomlalot near the coastal town of Esawiha. They're also referred to as monkey fingers. We're here by the fingers of the monkeys, which is volcanic rock that's pushed up. It looks like uh, monkey's fingers. And there's a French word for it too, which sounded more pleasant, but I don't remember. I feel like this is like clouds. You could spend hours just looking and seeing uh, different forms in all of these rocks. It's incredible. The little frog there. Oh dear. <laughs> well, or somebody squatting down, praying. <laughs> we'll leave it up to the viewers to figure out which one you're pointing to, because I don't see it. No, let us know in the comments if you see the the people praying or the turtle, whatever you frog. say. Frog. I said a frog. Oh, okay, frog. Getting ready to hop. <laughs> we chose the luxury option with higher end accommodations for our tour, but even that will vary. We were uncertain why we didn't know in advance where we'd be staying each night, but in part it's because your private tour guide will take some time to get to know you and your preferences. We stayed in a more authentic but upscale local hotel versus some other traveler who might want a luxury business type hotel in a less scenic location. When you travel in a group, your accommodations can't really be personalized as easily, or even at all. So while we're waiting here for dinner, I'm curious what your favorite part of today was. <laughs> well, that's a tough one. I mean, we saw so much in the whole day. It's like one beautiful sight after another, one historic, location after another um, so much information about it. this was filmed here this is formed by volcanic activity this is where this has happened it's like it's just beautiful to, to kind of just go through the mountains and, and peek into the desert and see where we have never seen this is a very cool experience just to feel like brand new, like nothing we've ever experienced and everything's new. So it's just, it's exciting. What about you? <laughs> you don't remember the day, do you? It's too much. We're just going to leave it there. Okay. <laughs> One of our favorite stops was Todra Gorge, located in the eastern part of the High Atlas Mountains. Its towering cliffs can reach heights of up to 400 meters, about 1,300 feet. While headscarves are optional and we could have negotiated harder for them, we felt like supporting a local Berber in Todra Gorge who could also put them on for us. We probably would have spent way too long figuring it out for ourselves. It was a fun way to really immerse ourselves in our desert experience. Uh, gotta be able to open that left eye, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think it looks pretty pretty. Really? Yeah. Here we go, all right. We're ready for the desert. Out to the desert. <laughs> We made a stop in Fezna to see a series of guitaras, 
a type of ancient water management system designed to transport water down slopes without active pumping. These date back to the 14th century. Due to modern technology which lowered the water table, as well as droughts, many of these kataras have gone dry. There is a 10 meter deep. In the mountains, there is 50 meter deep. In the wises, there is zero, because the water, they come straight from the mountains until the, the wises. And all that, it's working by hand. And what happened to this system, that it's not working anymore? Yeah, because the water is dry, mm -hmm. there is the source, how give to all these channels uh, or these systems, the water is dry. Okay. And that's it. Like, there is another one, if you can see it, down there, down the mountains, mm -hmm. it is working. Okay. Yeah. But there is not like enough water, there mm -hmm. is just a little. We paid a small entry fee to enter the dry canal, and afterward we enjoyed tea with this kind Berber woman who relied on donations. Lalam swell? Merci. Shukran. Shukran. Thank you. Thank you. Very delicious. <laughs> Medjul dates, known for their size and rich sweet flavor, are grown in the Arachidea region and are a Moroccan staple. Our guide hailed a vendor selling boxes of them, who gave us a free taste. Good, yes. Good doubt this is what we're going to do when we're going on a date. It's very sweet. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a bit sticky. Very good. Big raisin with a pit. 150 million years ago, the region surrounding Urfud was covered by the Tethys Ocean. Now it's known for its ancient marine fossils. We didn't visit any of the touristy centers, but we did a quick stop to meet up with a Berber tribesman who showed us some of the fossilized marine life. He pulled out a box of fossils that he had collected for sale. We gave him a small donation for his time, and he insisted we take a fossil in exchange. So we're waiting for the 4x4s to arrive, but just coming up on the dunes behind us is just jaw-dropping. I don't know, I don't think I was prepared for the size of those dunes. Uh, in any way, shape, or form. So my jaw is just on the floor. And we had a little sand over by the fossil spot we stopped at, and that was hard to walk on. So good luck on the dunes. <laughs> oh, just along. Our guide pulled us off the side of the highway where we met up with a 4x4 driver. Bouncy. That's why a 4x4 is required. That's right, yes. <laughs> we took the 4x4 and stopped at Kasbah Bivouac Lamada, where we had tea and hung out for a bit, waiting for the day to cool down. Everybody loves Bob Marley. Our Kasbah was very conveniently located, and we could watch several camels walk by. There was a beautiful lake to photograph, too. So I wasn't quite sure what to expect. We got on 4x4s and we arrived at a Riyadh and I knew we were still doing a camel ride, but all of our luggage got dropped off here. So it was a little confusing, but it's just because it was a bathroom stop, some opportunity for tea, and we're going to be picking up a camel ride from here that's going to be taking us to our tents for the evening and our luggage will meet us there. But meanwhile, we got to just really enjoy these beautiful sand dunes and this gorgeous water and then see three or four herds of camel coming by. Yeah, this is a very beautiful spot. I thought we were gonna stay here and I was very confused because it didn't sound right. We're taking four by fours everywhere in here. Or we just dis discarded our van because it is really bumpy. I mean, even the four by four looked like it was gonna have problems at one point, so. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is not an area for your standard low-riding car. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> we left our luggage behind and only brought our cameras and some bottled water for another 4x4 ride to get to our camels. Our camel ride began around 5 o'clock and we rode for about 45 minutes. 
It was a little unnerving getting on the camel and then having the camel get up from a kneeling position. Just hold on to the handlebar and sit back. You'll get a great workout holding on, especially on the downhills. You look so tall, Jothel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sweetie. How are you? As you can see, even though we had a private tour, we did meet up with one other couple for a camel ride, which actually was pretty nice. It is still warm out. It's not like we're here. Got a cooler part of the day. But it is beautiful scenery. Got palm trees, sand dunes, and camels. And appropriate headwear. What more could you ask for? We recommend wearing sandals with ankle straps if you have them because you'll walk on the sand afterwards to watch the sunset and that's easier barefoot. The sand isn't hot in the late afternoon, so you don't have to worry about that. We didn't get the memo and wore sneakers, which we tied around the handlebar. Headscarves are optional, but they add to the experience. You don't really need them because you're not in the heat of the sun. So we're... We're wandering through the sand here, <laughs> the dunes. I'm trying to watch out for pellets. <laughs> eh, it all comes out in the wash, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, cool sand. It's not hot. Yeah, surprisingly. Ooh, but look at that beetle. <laughs> I missed it. Scarab, are we in the mummy? Maybe. We had plenty of time before the sunset at 6.30 to climb the dunes and pick the best spot to watch the sunset. So I guess we get to see the sunset here while we're like, giving the camels a break. And... I'm just going to tell you, this is such a cool experience. I knew it would be cool. I didn't know it was going to be this cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I feel like the camel ride was not nearly as traumatic as I thought it might be. I think it helped that all four camels were roped together. So it's not like one of us was going to just take off because we got a rope camel or something. You know, which, which you've seen before on things. Sure, but I, I mean, your legs are spread very wide, but yeah. otherwise I don't think that it's so uncomfortable. You just have to hold on and brace yourself when you're going down. All right, my seat's a little less comfortable than hers, but <laughs> sure. It's, it's very comfortable, and, and, the, and the guy's really great. And he's, he's walking the camel, so it's not like they're going at a big clip here. We're, we're doing a really nice job of just easing over the dunes. Well, and the dunes are exquisite, so much bigger than I expected. And then there are these pockets of the lake. lake is just incredible looking as a foil to all of the sand. This yeah. has been I didn't such expect a great the lake. experience. I didn't expect the lake. That that really kind of is the, the, the oasis thing. You know, you feel like, wow, you're in the desert. You get to see an oasis. You get to be on sand dunes. You're riding camels. Check, check, check. All the boxes. Right. Yeah. If you have the opportunity to do this, you absolutely should. Yeah, definitely. Gorgeous experience. <laughs> At the end of the camel rides, the guide will lay out a bunch of souvenirs for you to purchase, or you can just give a tip. But he wow. will wait for tips, and it can get awkward if you don't provide one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, very uh, a moose bouche tagine. Yeah. <laughs> We had a little downtime before dinner, which was served in a nice tent with long tables. Seating was determined by who you rode camels with. 
It's a very relaxing evening after a beautiful camel ride and sunset. You couldn't ask for more. Yeah. Now we're just trying to catch as much of the stars as we can because we're not usually in a place this dark. So it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Afterwards, there was a lively bonfire and Berber music using traditional instruments performed by our guides. We liked the energy and enthusiasm of a larger group of assorted ages without having to be part of a larger group tour. There was some time at the end for people to learn how to play the instruments as well. We didn't realize that our guides wouldn't be joining us and everyone walked to the dunes independently. But it was helpful to follow others to the dunes when it was still slightly dark versus figuring it out for ourselves. So we got up early this morning so that we could watch the sunrise and it's starting to peak up. It's 10 to 7 and I think... Um, Officially it was like 7 or 7.15. Yeah, so we've got 15 minutes or so to watch, but you can already see it starting to come up. What's interesting is the sand is really soft. Yesterday it was much more compressed, I think, from the heat of the day. Um, than it is now, but it was a little bit more tricky to walk up here, but it's incredible so far. It's a very comfortable morning. I've got a jacket on just in case, but I don't really need it. It's just, it's really nice. And it's quiet the whole night. No machinery, no air conditioning, no anything going on. Well, there is electricity and there is running water yeah. in our luxury no, tents. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I mean, it's not like you hear the city noise or anything else. This is just quiet. There's animals. Yeah, <laughs> and a mosquito. <laughs> a mosquito, yeah. They're always around. This is beautiful. Yeah. We liked sharing the sunrise with everyone, and the dunes are massive and spread out, so you can find your own secluded spots for pictures. Watching the sunrise is optional, but we think that you should see as many sunrises as you possibly can in life. The Barbary macaws, a type of monkey, was an experience I was initially looking forward to, but we want to give you some warnings. Our guide told us that they were very friendly and wouldn't hurt us. As soon as our vehicle stopped, several locals were putting peanuts into our hands for us to feed the macaws and little cookies to give to the baby macaws. Of course, they want you to give them payment for all of this before you leave. Greedy, you're greedy. That's okay, I got it. It's okay, I got it. Thank you. Don't forget that these are wild monkeys who are not vaccinated and do not have any health checks. So disease transmission from a simple scratch is a real health risk. Okay. Yes. We weren't prepared for how acclimated these animals are to humans. They had no fear of us at all. But they literally swarmed us. You can see that they jumped on our heads and also were clinging to our legs, which for me was quite a bit unnerving. I probably should have embraced the experience, but it totally took me off guard. Hello. No, no, that's good. In hindsight, it would have been better to enjoy the animals from a bit of a distance. Depending on humans means they don't learn how to forage, their grooming habits diminish, and they become subject to an assortment of health issues, including obesity and disease from their close contact with humans. Nestled in the middle Atlas Mountains, only about 60 kilometers from Fez, is a town known as the Little Switzerland of Morocco. Its chalet-style architecture was built by the French in 1928 as a colonial settlement where Europeans and now wealthy Moroccans could escape the hot summers, thanks to it being one of the highest towns in Morocco. Yeah. 
There's even a ski resort here. Here are a few things we learned. Make sure you bring some bottled water with you on your excursion and stock up along your trip during your stops. No tour company we came across provides water. Bring plenty of Durham's with you. We were able to stop at an ATM to pick up some extra cash, but they're not always easy to find. We paid our tour company a deposit by PayPal, but we needed to pay our driver in cash. All the tour stops for food and any souvenirs will only accept cash. Be prepared for some local children and other people who magically show up at the panoramic view stops hoping for some cash or offering to have you take their picture in exchange for a few Durham's and a few other stops that cost money. If you're fair-skinned like Kevin and worry that a three-day tour will burn you to a crisp, you don't need to worry. A significant amount of your time in the desert is when it's later in the afternoon and cooler. Yeah, very good and very hot. It's a beautiful night. We're yeah, eating outside and it's just a wonderful little breeze. The best temperatures we've had <laughs> in a couple of weeks, so can't beat this. And if you're on a four-day tour, you'll be utilizing the morning hours before it gets too hot. We think all the driving is worth it because there are a lot of jaw-dropping scenic stops to break up your trip. Although getting to the desert is exciting, so are all the picturesque sites along the way. Check out our website for more detailed information about our Sahara Desert tour. We'll put a link in our description. Our guide coordinated with the host at our Riyadh by phone and took us directly to our meeting okay. spot and waited until no, someone from our Riyadh met up with us before Stay leaving. Driving. Hello. Hello. Is the Sahara Desert trip on your bucket list? We'd love to know. So what did we spend for this bucket list three-day trip? Merzuga Tours charged us $657.66, or $328.83 a piece. This included an English-speaking driver, tour guide, two nights in luxury accommodations, two multi-course dinners, and a breakfast buffet on the last morning. In preparation for this trip, I bought a pair of desert pants, and we each bought a headscarf and also some sunscreen. The biggest cost was the sunscreen at $22. The total in this category was $58.15. Food costs were fairly minimal. Three lunches cost us $83.74, or $27.91 per day, or $13.96 per person per day. Groceries, which were basically snacks and water and cappuccino, cost us a total of $18.94, which is $6.31 per day, or $3.16 per person per day. We paid $202 in tips, including $125 for our tour guide. That might have been a little on the high side, but we were happy to do it. So for this trip, we spent $1,020, or $510 per person over the course of three days, which breaks down to $340 per day, or $170 per person per day. Except for wishing we had given ourselves an additional day, we had a great once-in-a-lifetime experience in the Sahara Desert, and we highly recommend it for you too. We hope you've enjoyed this amazing episode through the Sahara Desert. If you haven't already subscribed, we hope you'll do that. And the best compliment that you can give to us is to recommend us to your friends and family. And check out FindingGeneMarie.com as I slip down the dune. <laughs> <laughs> we have plenty of resources there, things to download, and our community forum. Until next time. Until next time.